Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 146 of Trials and Trebuchets. I'm your Dungeon Master, Luke, and joining me are my players who are here to do things with me. Hello, I am Ben, and I'm here to do things with Luke and everyone yes. else here. Yes. And I play uh, the level seven gnome wizard, Winsler Wallaby, along with his cuddly little companion, Mr. Wiggles, who may or may not be up to no good. No. <laughs> I'm here to do things with all of you. It's me, Carla, and I play the level seven tiefling roguelock, Integrity I, Idol Berry. We're in the estate to escape our fate away from the ears that hate us. We're here to talk, eat cake and steal, seventh wheel good meal appeal. <laughs> oh. Ooh. 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 Very nice. Hi, I'm Sarah, uh, always doing all the things. And I play Mira Marchand, who's also always doing all the things and is a level seven half elf bard. New school, Welpcus fixed its decor. It's how it was before. There's no glass anymore cause of Keepsy. Cute. Uh, hi, cool. like my name is Sam, and I play the <laughs> level seven human sorceress, Sarah Neff Cinderman. I tried making bad glass puns last time, and I promise it will never happen bad again. <laughs> no, we and, want more. No. Mm -hmm. And last time on Trials and Trebuchets, the students regrouped in a normal and very regularly adorned wild cliff. Mira fessed up about potentiality to Adeline before the group debriefed and went to the <laughs> and went to Artis Artesian's intact office to, to assess one. the efficacy of the unsmushing. After they made themselves sad, the group teleported to the Raythorn estate in order to have some privacy from campus eavesdroppers and for Delness to show them what she has been working on, apparently, in the behind the scenes. So... We hear in the air the notes, doo -doo 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 -doo, whatever a piano sounds like. I don't actually know. No, that's kind accurate. of a weak spot. Okay, piano doo -doo 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 -doo, in the background, uh, <laughs> twinkling on the air, as it were, on this cool autumn night. <laughs> Wind, <laughs> wind. Um, the 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 wind shakes the leaves. A uh, shake. The... <laughs> what is Are you okay? Do we need to take a breath, we, you... to take a breath Luke? <laughs> what happened? The, the the wind shakes the nearby trees, bare of any of their leaves, on the ground scattered across the estate land is many multicolored leaves. There's red ones. There's some green ones. There's a lot of yellow ones. Too many yellow ones. It kind of ruins the general mixing of everything. It's not quite as aesthetic as it should be, but there's also orange. Uh, and, and these just kind of cover the land uh, in, a, in a very fun way. There's a as I described, a hedge maze. The hedges are an orangey kind of color. Felice, the uh, butler, the the guy who gets the things done here on the at the Raythorn Estate, is trimming at the hedge. He doesn't seem to be minding uh, the rest of you that much as you walk on by and into the actual mansion itself, the one from which the music did a little bit uh, previously mentioned is emerging. Delness Raythrin leads the way, uh, hot dog hat on head, uh, behind her, Amira and Integrity and Winsler and Sarenep and the two twin Idleberry children, uh, follow. Winsler, you have a gleam in your eye and a penchant for theft right now. Uh, could you make me an investigation check as you walk through this main hallway? Um, mm, yes. Thievery. 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 Five. Damn. Ooh, five. Ah, oh, yes, this floor oh. is made of floor. Mm. Winsler stares at the floor. He stares at those lovely tiles, thinking, mm, I wonder what those tiles are made of. Uh, not platinum, very clearly, but nonetheless, you stare down at them. You look at a couple of vases seated upon tables lining this entry hallway. Uh, you all remember what the Raythorn Estate looks like. We did a whole arc here. We don't need to belabor this, but we will. Uh, and, and some flowers and such things are here. You look at those, examine them slightly, uh, and and as you do, trying to quickly move from one to the next to the next very quickly before anyone can uh, really take note of you uh, casing the joint, Winsler, uh, you do, in fact, all hear Winsler drop and shatter one of these pots, very nice and fancy looking pieces of pottery upon the ground. It splinters or smashes and breaks into probably 17 or more pieces. I would lean heavily on the or more of that section, however. Uh, oh, and I thought it was you hear the piano. 
Alright. Stop. That's what pianos sound like, like when they stop, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, as the shatter happens. Uh, you hear a voice call out and say, Felice, is that you? Uh, Winsler, can't you mend this? Or is this... <laughs> I'm going to swiftly cast mending. <laughs> Uh, make an arcana check in order to do it fast. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's an 18. Ooh, an 18 is pretty freaking fast. Fastest hands in the east, they call them, uh, in terms of just mending things and nothing else. Uh, you pick the couple pieces of the pot up. In fact, it is 17 exactly. No more, no less. You pick mm. them up and mend them very quickly. Uh, with the mending spell, it can do about a foot of stuff mended at once, so it's a fairly simple operation. Uh, you hear uh, the approaching footfalls of one Elric Wraithrin, uh, presumably coming from the nearby music hall, uh, and as Winsler puts this thing away, you can all rush forward. Uh, Delness seems to be leading you. If you recall, they... This the, 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 to describe. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Please, I'm very scatterbrained right now. Winsler uh, mends this vase and puts it back on the mantelpiece or like on the side table wherever he had s- grabbed it and dropped it from. Delness seems to be leading you through the foyer of the uh, of the mansion. There is a grand staircase in the center of the room and the the entire house itself splits into an eastern and western wing at this point in this room. Uh, she is leading you, however, forward towards, like, further into the foyer and is approaching a panel in the wall. And if you all recall from the time you were here for that murder mystery party, you had all t- together discovered this kind of panel in the wall and a passageway through the walls themselves almost between the exterior and interior stone walls uh, that led to some sort of small laboratory that was presumably uh, extant in the house and just was used for the murder mystery as a fun setting she seems to push the wall and open it and you hear uh, fast approaching footsteps uh, coming from the music hall if you would like to wait and speak with Elric Raytheron and have some sort of encounter with him you may do so it seems that Delness is rushing in ma- in a way that would indicate that she would like to not to do that. Yeah, I would also like to not do that. Yeah, I don't want to talk to him. No, he's, yeah. all, he's weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will clue so, in with Delness. <laughs> we rush the kids in too. So Delness cracks open the panel, uh, this wall panel, uh, to a dimly, if any any light that spills into this hallway is all that rem- is in there to illuminate the uh, s- steep surface within. Uh, and you can all rush within as she shuts the door behind you. Uh, from that main foyer, you hear echoing footsteps and uh, the voice of Elric Wraith and go, Felice, Felice, did you break something out here? Uh, before he just returns to whatever he was doing. After a few moments, you hear piano music continue. Uh, it seems to be okay, piano music, nothing spectacular, nothing out of this world, uh, and, and mumbled singing at that as well. <laughs> you all, uh, single file, walk through this hallway, and there's a, a small ladder. You climb upwards, exiting into a kind of laboratory-like setting that is located in the space between the walls. There is large workbenches in here. At the back of the room, there are uh, steel cabinets of a sort, uh, and there are many tables uh, scattered around the room. I remember this room. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's where we had the thrilling climax to Scandal. A lot of explosions. <sighs> yeah. S- this time, distinctly less explosions. Somebody Sarah fell down the stairs, I think. I don't uh, remember. Because yeah, of the explosion. Yeah, accurate. explosion yeah. happened. Yes. Uh... Mira, make a perception check. Oh, shit. Okay. For me. Oh, 15 plus mm. three. 18. A remarkably, an 18. With an 18, a remarkably s- familiar scent hits your nostrils as you up- enter into this room. It smells floral, like an overpowering perfume almost. Oh. Got it. Oh, boy. Uh, hmm. And sitting on one of those workbenches next to a small notebook uh, and on the other side next to a large crystal ball seated in like a cool silver like crystal ball holder of a sort, um, you see uh, a steel drum almost like a steel uh, or like a like almost like a 
Hmm. What's the best size? The scale of this, it looks like a coffee tin almost, I guess. Like a, 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 a container of coffee. Like that size, if that makes sense. Uh, like what you would buy at the grocery store. Um, except it's just made completely of metal itself. It has the lid off of it, which is, and it's where the scent is coming from. Mm -hmm. Delness, Raythrin, will walk over to it slowly and say, um, before we start talking about this integrity, are you sure your siblings should be here with us? If, if you need, we could get Felice to watch over them and get them some food while we talk about things. Well, I know that you have lots of good food here, so mm -hmm. I assume that Ernest and Enora, you wouldn't mind that if they, if we talk here while you eat good food? They shake food? their heads, and Ernest will say, no, I don't mind, and Enora will, uh, will say, I would really... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm going to say also to them, uh, oh, also, um, if you guys are going to leave, I have a, a pretty important job for you guys. Uh, can you guys watch this necklace of mine and, like look over it and keep it super Ooh. safe. Ooh. And I'm going to hand them a persuasion check. The ear as necklace. you hand them a kind of a golden elf ear. <laughs> Wait, is that a 1 or a 7? That's a oh, 1 no. plus 7. Uh oh. so that's an 8. Wow. Oh. Uh do I know what this ear does? Did Mira oh. tell us yet or not? I said it. I think I said I don't remember yeah, if everyone was there, but it does, does what, exactly it what it looks like. Exactly what it looks like. Yeah. So yeah. One might be able to infer that it's you know, a listening since device. They were yeah, yeah. Um, you can infer this. So, Integrity, you suggest to your siblings, hey, why don't you go get some food? And they look happy at that. They they are a bit, like, kind of feel like they're in a kind of magical world as they walk through this, like, very fancy mansion that yeah. almost looks like someone brought nature inside. Yeah, the plants inside also have these autumnal colors and all of this stuff. And now they're in this kind of scary laboratory section. And you're <laughs> suggesting, why don't you get good food? And they look happy. They were a respond in the affirmative to that and midway through them doing that Mira holds out this little <laughs> golden elf ear it twitches heavily when you hold it out to them Mira Ew. like an ear trying to listen or trying to just like a ear that got some cut off someone's head and is still twitching almost oh. um, and doing they will look nightmares. they will look very scared at that and like Ernest will shake his head no and Nora just looks at it like mouth agape Mira um, no, no, no. Do you remember um, when we were out walking um, by the by the water and there was a store that was selling a bunch of moving um, moving toys? That's what basically this is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it, it has never been seen before. But but this is it's really, rare. really good. And I think that you'll enjoy playing around with it. Mm -hmm. Make a deception check with disadvantage. Like, like you can lie it down on the ground and then you can make it crawl. Um isn't that really funny? Make a deception check with a disadvantaged integrity. Can I assist? <laughs> uh, okay. Mira, you can assist by going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, that's what it does. That's what it does. So just make a regular, in that case, okay. check. <laughs> deception, please. What the fuck? Perfect. To make these kids take this listening ear. I got a 16 plus two. Okay. 18. Um, and Nora will say, well, if it's a toy, okay. It but looks it, like it, a caterpillar. It's not gonna like, like a caterpillar. And Ernest will, Ernest does not look excited about this prospect, but Enora will put her hand out to take the necklace from you, Mira. Okay, I will give it to Enora. Okay. Don't break uh, it, though. Is it breakable? If you break it, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, you heard her. I'll be, I'll be, we'll be careful with it, though. And Ernest says, I won't touch it. So if it breaks, it's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and Delness will kind of bring them back out of the room and go fetch Felice in order to, like, have him take care of them. Uh, and after, like, two or three minutes of standing alone in this room, that fragrance fills all of your noses. It smells familiar, a very intense floral scent. And when Delness returns... Uh, or before Dallas returns, did any of you want to, like, look into it, into that jar, or poke your noses around at yeah. what her stuff is? Because I recognize yes. the perfume scent yeah. from that. Okay. Also, historically, jars that smell like flowers, not good. Yep. Yes. This is a laboratory. Could there be a vial here? <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> oh my God. God. Winsler make an investigation check while the rest of you kind of approach that jar, that cough, that tin of floral scent. 
No luck, Ben? I got an 11. Ah, ah. Winsler sees his friends approaching the main attraction of the room, it seems. You look through some of the display cabinets scattered throughout the room uh, and then meander onto the back of the laboratory and open one of those steel cupboards, Winsler, uh, and are greeted with a cold air which blows out uh, and see that it seems... You see in the darkness, hanging uh, as if they are pieces of meat in a butcher's room, uh, assorted, not dead animals, but like frozen in, or like animals that have rigor mortis almost, Uh. where they're just like locked up, just hanging there inside of these steel cupboards. It's like ducks and such things. Disgusting. Serenath? I think... Kind of with the thought process of earlier and now being in the home of someone who studies necromancy mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. Yes. I think just like, are there like any bookshelves in the laboratory or mm. anything like that? Make an investigation check for me. You all, How about the all like the three of you, Serenepth, Integrity, and Mira also make investigation checks just so that we can cover our bases <gasps> here. Oh, wait. <laughs> I thought it was a four. Four. <laughs> <Lord, please. laughs> Plus Most. something. Uh Three. 17. Uh, 17. Three. Holy Plus shit. Four. 19. Oh nice. my god. So, we got a 17 plus 4 from Integrity? No, 13 plus 4, so ah, 17. Okay. 17. Uh, Mira, what did you also get? Also 17. Sorry? Also 17. But in this case, and it was then... a 14 plus 3, not a 13 plus oh, 4. Oh, congratulations. So, Winsler, you discover in the back those almost petrified animals uh, stored for who knows what fiendish reasons don't like that or maybe it's a maybe it's a genuine actual reason but the the atmosphere points to scariness um with 17s i would say that you mira and integrity notice that the there's a journal uh next to this or like between the crystal ball and that tin of floral scented such and such which we'll get to in just a moment. Uh, you do, You first, though, notice the notebook, uh, which has written in it probably two days worth of just, like, experimentation notes and, like, reading notes, right? Like, as if Delness has been reading and taking notes on the subject of hallucinogens, hmm. uh, specifically necromantic hallucinogens. Serenaph, you notice scribed almost imperceptibly into the surface of that crystal ball. Uh, There is almost a title to it, as if it was like a book title on the spine. Does that make sense? Uh, Like on the crystal ball? Yes, like inscribed onto the surface of it, like scratched in um, by some some, uh, librarian somewhere, somehow, uh, with like a fun little chisel. Um, The grimoire... (laughs) You see the title... The Grimoire of Necessary Necromantic Rites and Incantations to Contend with Death. What a mouthful. What a mouthful. <laughs> that seems to be the title of this crystal ball. Wait, the crystal ball is a book in and of itself? Mm-hmm. That's as so you fucking touch, cool! As you touch the surface of the crystal ball, it almost seems to sparkle to life. And within you see a, 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 a black fog and it it plays a almost like a 2002 era dvd movie uh like (laughs) dvd menu animation oh my god God, i love that a table of contents pulls up and you see that there's lists of different necromantic hallucinogens uh a couple of different uh just indexes of spells and uh, ingredients and the sort and then there's a whole list there's a whole third of this grimoire dedicated to how to lie about bringing people back from the dead incredible Very fun hmm. i th- i think it, it, it has subheadings such as disguises to use lies that can be good lies that will never work and <laughs> what to do if you're in love with the person and cannot let them go oh cool oh my god, oh my god. Oh, i'm Jesus. learning a lot today it's fucking hilarious uh, uh-huh. and so saren as you investigate that i think mira you move over to following your nose and kind of uncover the lid from that container uh and as you do so delness re-enters the room when you all see 
in that container about three pounds of that gr- dark green dust. Okay. Um, hmm. And she will kind of click her tongue behind you like, okay, uh, so to explain... I was going to mention this to you the other day when I came before your duel. You all seemed like you had other stuff going on and I didn't want to, you know, like upset you. I, I, After we talked, Mira, uh, in the courtyard that one time when you ran off to talk, chase after the cat, I, I just couldn't get out of my head of like you having those visions. And so... I wanted to ask you to come come with me back to this back to the sewers, but you were you had other stuff going on, like the potentiality stuff. I I know that now, but um, I went by myself and oh. collected some of this. Are are you are you okay? Like, did anything happen? There was. It felt like there was something watching me, but oh. not not like last time where it felt like I was being really watched. I think it was more just me being uh, paranoid about it like in my own head well i'm i'm glad you didn't see anything jeez okay mm-hmm. um you you brought um, this this dust back the the yeah, orchid stuff i brought it and showed it to indamati mentor and she gave me the grimoire gave me a couple of pointers and then kind of said that as long as i wrote down what i was experimenting with that she didn't feel the need to tell any of the professors about this which is good right yeah it's good if other professors don't know so so what what did you find out well according to the book it's some sort of necromantic well indomani told me this uh she smelt it and just smelling it she told me that it was not like an illusory or enchanting kind of hallucinogen uh residue it was necromantic Uh, And then so she gave me this because it has like and she taps the crystal ball serum that you're looking into. uh, And she so she gave me this because it has a a section on uh, astral projection, which she assumed it might be related to. Uh, I hope it's okay. I told her a little bit, not about everything, but just about the time that we got like pulled somewhere else, Mira. Mm -hmm. And what does yeah. that mean, a, a necromantic hallucinogen? Does that mean like hallucinating stuff th- about people that are dead? Because that makes sense with what we mm-hmm. saw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just that it's real. It's just about the dead. That makes sense. As opposed to like, an illus- I'm not an expert on illusions, but I think that would just mean something being made up or enchanting would be something you would take to like, I don't know, trip really bad. Oh. Hmm. So whatever we saw there would have been of, of, of the dead, which makes sense because that mm-hmm. obviously would have been um, Shiora. I, I wonder if um, one of the things you were talking about, uh, my eyes glazing over, and um, you guys, I guess I should probably tell you this too. Uh, she talked to me again. There was, I mean, there was the thing I said about, you know, uh, going to An- Angelica's and then that happened there. But it also happened right as the potentiality stuff uh, did its thing. This whole like, oh, why haven't you contacted me? And I mentioned Nesca and she seemed to be upset and like all of that uh so i wonder i don't know if there's a connection there but i thought it was worth bringing up okay Hmm. Hmm. so this this powder that is in here Mm -hmm. you should put the lid back on by the way before like the fumes spread just because it is like a hallucinogen i I, it's probably a bad idea if we're in this cramped space and like letting it get out right it's already a a a jar we don't want it to be a jar too (laughs) Oh Everyone stares at Mira in this situation, and Delnitz will just move and put the lid back on. In, I'm going like, to shake my head. Your, yeah, uh, <laughs> Integrity shakes her head. Sort of uh, just Sarah. like clapping. <laughs> Winsler is in deep contemplative thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so she'll say, so according to the book, you can kind of, I don't know if it's true for this because it's not really listed as a, a reagent in in the indexes or like a hallucinogen in the indexes but for most of them you can concentrate them uh, in and almost like an alchemical reaction it takes a couple of weeks but i almost wonder mira because the last time when we were like forced to 
eat this. It was almost like out of our control or it felt out of my control. I was just like in your head, not like of my own person or something like that. But the Mm -hmm. astral projecting kind of magic that it talks about says um, if you use concentrated forms of reagents, then it it can be a lot more... um, real like almost. lucid dreaming i guess probably something like that or 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 just like summoning spirits and speaking with them almost except instead of you summoning the spirits it's you going to to the spirits and do you know how to do this or where you can find um i mean there's steps it depends on if we want to keep this like tight lipped or not we probably don't want uh, other people knowing about dust that if you eat it lets you see an ancient civilization that got murdered and uh, of whom a few people are still kind of undead and maybe want to kill us. Mm-hmm. Good point, good point. But you say that if you want to keep this hush, hush. Yeah. Who were you thinking would... I was just thinking of asking Ainsley because I know he knows, like he talks a lot and he's kind of like pompous and an idiot, but he does actually, he is actually good at alchemy, right? And that's not my, I've taken classes, but it's not my area of expertise or anything. Like I think I'm passable. I don't know about the rest of you, um, but I'm sure we could figure something out and try to work something out if we wanted to. I don't, I'm saying all of this presuming that you would even want anything to do with this at all. I, I just thought that maybe it was a good way to, I don't know, figure out what was happening. Integrity Idleberry. Uh, do you mind refreshing for me what it, what the book I got from... Um, mm. I got from Isithil was? The Loft of Elders. Yes. That was a, uh advanced alchemy book written in Primordial. Can I, um while they're talking, like after this... Mm-hmm. um go over that book and see if there was anything that said something adjacent to what Delnus just told us. Like right now, as as their conversations continue on, do you want to fish it out of like your backpack or something? Yes. Okay. Um do you read Primordial? Um I remember Very I well. got like a power from being a warlock that Ooh. allows me Ah, when you leveled up you took an invocation. What's the name of that invocation? Uh I took up the Hi, my name is Caroline. I don't know what I'm doing. I think it should be Eyes of the Rune Keeper, if I'm not mistaken. If I recall my warlock information properly. Um, I think so. Eyes okay. of the Rune Keeper does let you read like legible writing so long okay. as it's like actual like perfect language, I think. So in that case, thank you everyone. Uh, for the rules clarification, uh, in that case, Integrity, you fish out from your pack this thin uh, advanced alchemy book. Uh, written in some sort of primordial primordial, written by presumably Semeli. Um, And as the conversation continues on, you zone out and read this using your eyes of the runekeeper. Your eyes go a pitch black with red tinges lacing through them, almost as if the veins in your eyes, the capillaries are still present, but the rest of it goes black like ink. Uh, And you read this, and it seems that the bulk of the book is... There's a small introduction. It was written by Semeli in their early years of experimentation in the loft and uh, seems to be done or seems to deal with creating homunculi Ooh. from clay and ash in order to do uh, minor tasks and bidding. They don't last forever and they're not the smartest things on the planet, but they are humble and very loyal. So clearly this does not have anything to do with what we're talking about, so I'm just going to close the book right back up. Okay. Okay. And what does what the and so back in while Integrity's looking at this her book, what how does the conversation continue? Delness was talking about like I, I don't know if this is even something you want to pursue, but if we did, I might be able to do something with 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 your help or I could get Ainsley to help us, or or even we could tell more to Indumati. It's up. It's up to. It's up to you. Uh, Integrity knows some stuff about alchemy too. I mean, I'm sure if we all work together, we could figure something out. So, so just to be clear, you're sort of thinking that like concentrating this stuff will create like a vision that we can control better, something like mm-hmm. that, or like yeah. a proper kind of. Hmm. Almost I mean, to tell you the, the way... truth. Yeah. 
like, I mean, Teresa is speaking to me back there. I don't want to keep just getting like random people, like just triggering these visions. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to sit down and have a proper conversation and be like, Hey, I don't want to talk to you anymore Mm -hmm. because I don't like this. Do you think we would be able to find a way to speak to her if we figured out how to dilute this stuff? That's what this, like the description of how it feels kind of seems like to me. Um, we could uh, concentrate it and, and, and like let it incubate as it were and I can like watch over it and make sure it's not going horribly wrong and my suggestion was maybe instead of just you alone going Mira like everyone goes so and instead of all being fused into your body it's kind of everyone's there if that's what people want I'm I'm fine with that I that sounds like That's going to be very helpful. Um, I don't necessarily want just the two of you like going there on your own. If if you need help and support, we're we're here for you. We're really all in this together, are we not? Yeah, Um, and and you know, I I think there might be some. I mean, like just what you're saying makes sense because during that like five second conversation we had, she Mm -hmm. did say this thing about like, why haven't you reached out to me? You were supposed to Mm -hmm. go do the thing with the dust, which obviously didn't work. So maybe it was just that we weren't doing it right Mm -hmm. Uh, what about the two of you Winsler and Serena I know that this is kind of weird to spring on you I don't know if this is like something you'd be open to at all well I don't know really much about the whole snake business and all that and all that stuff but if you if you need my help I'll be I'll be happy to help you out and Serena Uh, I think she's kind of like looking at the crystal ball but when she's asked she kind of looks up and just kind of like any way I can help Okay, uh, if that's the case, you all have a duel tomorrow morning sometime. This, okay, the process is probably going to take a, f- a fairly long time, like 12, 16 hours. Is I think that starting it now, and then it'll be ready by the time like s- spring semester rolls around would be, because it needs time to incubate, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. the sooner we start it, the better. We could put it on campus somewhere, even just in case. And she kind of gestures to the house in general, you know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that that is a while to wait. I was kind of hoping I could get this dealt with sooner. But I guess if we're not on campus anyway during um, winter break, then theoretically mm-hmm. this stuff shouldn't keep coming up. Oh, I mm-hmm. forgot to say, we got a job. We're going to be up in Troil for winter break for most of it. So that's that's cool, I guess. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think we can probably do that. Do they that. get mail up there? Uh, presumably. Like, I'm going to go... I'm going to be spending winter break with my mother. And I was just wondering, like, if I write you, will it get there? Or is there even I a mean, point if you're only going to be there for like a week? Uh, we're going to be there for a couple weeks, actually. But I'm, I'm assuming they get mail. I mean, there's people who okay. live there and cool. work there. And I'm, I, I, it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Hey, by if, the way, um, what, like, is this place, this lab? Like, oh, why is it, like, in I, a secret panel in the I have wall? no clue. I literally don't <laughs> know at all. It's like I found out that like my room and she points at one of the walls and she goes, my room's right there. So it was like right next to me the entire time. There's weird animals in the fridge. I don't like in, in, in the cupboards. I don't know if you looked at there. I just it's, saw them. It's, yeah. Um, it's really ominous. Do you Wait, not feel what? weird? Did that- you guys like inherit this house or like was it built for you? Like was this somebody um, else's? Like It's like the family house, like the Raytheran family, like my dad's family and everything. Huh, what is really your family? Weird. Really weird. Like like weird. are you just weird. rich or, or or like how did your family become oh rich? God. I I mean I've never really thought about that integrity. I, I just kind of like, we were born rich. My dad does music and everything. My mom was like uh, in with nobles and like government kind of working things. So I kind of just assumed it was like inherited money and someone some time along ago did something that warranted getting a lot of money. Uh, I didn't ever really think about it that hard. I got a question, Delness. Yeah, since we're just asking a ways, uh, why don't um, you just ask? I was looking around. Do you happen to have a spare platinum <laughs> inlay vial that's worth probably about <laughs> roughly 400 gold pieces? Wizard's um, desperate. I figured I should probably ask. My dad is getting rid of a couple of things, oh, like no. big 
crates full of stuff. Some kind of scary looking people came by a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to lie. And like grabbed like six or seven crates full of stuff from the basement. Um, I think there's still two or three crates of stuff down there that they didn't take. So if there was anything valuable, like really valuable like that, it would probably be down there. Can I go have a look? <laughs> Uh, I would, Winsler, you why want, do you need a, va- a vial? Yeah, why do you want that though? I like first, if you want it, I would talk to my dad because it's his stuff. Like, don't please don't take my dad's stuff. Um, but why why do you need that even? No, no reason. It's very no. specific. I'm a wizard. I need components for my spells. Not all of my spells. I can just wave a hand and go mm-hmm. swoopity doop, and something happens. You know? Yeah, I get that. I, I really get that. A lot of it, ne- necromancy is actually like that, where it's like, oh, go collect eighteen mushrooms of a certain variety. And it's like I don't have the time for that. It's nothing ex- um, like sometimes it's expensive, like gems yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I needed but, like, diamonds the to cast uh, Revivify, and then mm-hmm. it didn't even work. So that was a waste of diamonds. I don't know who even comes up with this stuff. I mean, why can't all magic just be like? Shabam, basm, ka- kablam. Oh, yeah. you know. You would think that people with magic would make it so that they don't need components and they can just magically have it. Well, but it's not I like you're just well, making the magic. Broken. You're kind of like pulling it out of the air, and you need things to channel that and everything. That's why, like, people use wands. You know, as a side note, because it mm-hmm. kind of eliminates the need for a lot of that. Just. You know, also with the it's because we called it, ones an old people spell casting thing a while ago. Sorry about that. Also, it's just really weird that I specifically need this kind of vial to put a pickle <laughs> tentacle and an eyeball in. I'm sorry, what? It's very weird. Um, I could just I could just use any other bottle, but no, it has to be one I mean, that's worth like 400 as, gold pieces. As far as I'm pickled, not made of money, you know. I don't know if you found a pickled eyeball yet. You might. You can probably score one of those in the necromancy department, though. I don't. I have no clue about the platinum. I got like places to find pi- a pickled tentacle and an eyeball. Don't oh, worry. Okay. 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 Um, not the library though. They don't like. Should we either. get started on, <laughs> like doing stuff though yeah 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 oh by the way if, if there is um if there is necromancy stuff in this lab um mm-hmm. i didn't i couldn't say it before because you would have died um but our mentor cool. is a pebble uh uh he okay yeah I was so just, yeah. a demon burnt up his orb and turned him into a rock and we fought it and that was right when we arrived on campus and everything got smushed so we're uh-huh. also looking for a way um, cause we were briefly thinking about using that like polymorph potion, but then I guess they used it for keepsy, so we can't use that. So well, if you oh, can't think of I any- I didn't use any polymorph potion for keepsy. Wait, I thought you guys were going to give them like arms and legs and stuff. Did you, you, you didn't use it? I guess we kind of glossed over that a little bit. When we <laughs> Wait, first so how that. are they being the shepherd if, if they don't have eyes or arms? How are they like- Doing the thing. Um, don't worry about it. And then reality it. I'm sure collapses. I'm no. sure it's fine. <laughs> okay, well, nothing's collapsed yet, so I guess it is. Wait, so we still have that? We can still use it? I still have it with me, yeah. Okay, because I know I said before that we shouldn't Where'd use you it, get but a then potion of my parents... True polymorph. That's like uh, a big Yeah, thing. that was in the Plain of Isithil. Remember how I told you about how we were in the Plain of Isithil? And I got it from my grandma. Was... Yep, that's it. Remember the lady who came <laughs> to the party, the golem party, the the like the little short blue lady who came with my Winsler? grandma. Okay, yep. from Winsler's the plane of grandma Isithil. apparently. Yeah, from the plane uh, of Isithil? Sure. I guess. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Because I know I said we shouldn't use that potion because we didn't have a way to communicate with Artis, but my parents want to meet Artis, and <laughs> so the circumstances are a little different now. So if we we might be if we can find some way to research spells, maybe even after we bring Artis back to make him large, since I know the potion won't let us do that, I think that might be something that we should possibly consider. What if we turned Artis Pebble into a worm? That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Winsler. Yeah, for I think it'd be funny for about five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I mean, especially the, something that powerful this, that shouldn't joke. Crystal ball, the one Serenup's touching, it has like a lot of really kind of like borderline info on death. I don't know if there's something in there. Like maybe Sarah enough you can look through there while the rest of us get started on this and and see if you can find any leads um or Absolutely. any more information that I glossed over. I I've been just kind of like scanning it the past couple of nights. So so a fresh set of eyes would be actually really nice to look over it. Um I and mean then- down this with the amount of stuff that you've been doing the last couple of days like I'm it's very impressive. Like I'm more than happy mm-hmm to do this part of the research mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you uh, can focus on other things and if you wanted to like 
polymorph. That seems really stupid. I think it'd be best to do research first before. Or like, did why not talk to a professor? Or like a well, we could do before because they would have died. Yeah. Um, Is that one hundred percent guaranteed? Try well, explaining. Well, Fidan died. Yeah. I talked. Yeah, I talked to someone that our that artist had known uh-huh. in our reality, and when I said his name, she shattered into oh, glass in front of okay. me. Um, well, how about you look at the, she looks visibly distressed at that idea. I feel so um, bad yeah. for Delness. Like, she's just like a pin cushion and we're like, here, 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 here's all the facts. Hey, so, Delness. Hey, Delness. Ser- 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 Serenep, why don't you look at that? Mm-hmm. The instructions for like how to get started on everything. Integrity, if you know the basics of alchemy, you should be able to walk through that and like get everything ready. I'll go get something to like eat from the kitchen and see like how Felice and everyone is doing and just let my dad know that people are going to be here all night uh, so that he doesn't like do anything weird. Uh, Delmas, mm-hmm. can you not mention my name? Because the last time I saw him, he was writing a song to try mm. to impress um, your uh, mom mm-hmm. and he wanted my help and I really yes. don't want to <laughs> do that. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, he's still writing it, uh, oh and it's bad. It's really <laughs> oh, bad. No. It's kind of mm. terrible, and I've mm. been living in agony in my own yeah. home. Yeah, yeah, that's that's he, fair. It doesn't have any lyrics. It's just him saying my mom's name over and over <laughs> and over again <laughs> in different like oh, different different kind of yep. like styles. Uh, yeah, he wants me to help play piano with him, which one, uh, if you want someone to play the piano, it shouldn't be me because, and then I hold up my prosthetic with like the four fingers. <laughs> and second, I don't want to. Uh, okay, so maybe but, just don't yeah. mention that I'm here. All right, I'll While say While they're talking that- about this, um, mm-hmm. hearing this, I start humming, uh, I start singing like in the background. Adeline, oh Adeline, Adeline. Even that, no, no, integrity. Even, even more. That's like that. That, that it's not even. Oh, Adeline. It's just Adeline. Oh. Adeline. It like so I, I'm not a good bad, singer, bad. but you, you get the he's idea. The head of the music department, right? Yeah, like theory wise. I don't know. Oh. You know. He's not really good at teaching music theory. Taking but, any kind yeah. of music class. He's not a, a great songwriter. Teacher. Professors are crazy. No, he's oh. a really great teacher, though. Mm-hmm. Um, not that I know anything about that. I'm okay. I'll tell him that like Zara and Ainsley and Penny are here then. Cool. Yeah. And he won't pry in. I'll just tell him not to do anything weird or be weird or do anything like he would. Uh, and I'll get some food. Okay. Uh, okay. And and is do do you integrity? Do you need your siblings to anything for them and or something like that um just i guess don't overfeed them i already overfed them earlier today and my sister was feeling a little bit sick okay. uh so probably like give them food and then make them run around or something get that energy sound out like they're cats my, my <laughs> mom will uh they are I, I will get in trouble with my mom if uh okay. they're just super energetic by okay, okay, okay. the time we get home uh as Dulles is talking about going down to get food, um, I think uh she would just be like, Um, are you she like reaches into um one of her other pockets and just mm-hmm. pulls out her general like notebook. Yes. She's like, Are you okay if I make notes as I Oh yeah, go through? um Yeah, make notes again. Indomati gave me this saying that she hadn't looked through it or anything. She was just kinda mm-hmm. like, You might find your answers in here very vaguely um like an under the table wink wink kind of thing so if you write anything down i think that she would want to see it so just make like two copies at most and like i can just pass that along to her um as like research notes um but uh, yeah go at it uh knock yourself out and and also integrity shouldn't you tell like it's not it's not my place to kind of step in on these things but wouldn't your mother be worried if she heard no word from you, but suddenly you and your siblings were not on campus anymore? Oh, absolutely. Um, is there any way for you, Delness, to get some uh-huh. message out there that can... Uh, I can like- ask Felice to like write something and run to campus and like give it to someone or find your parents. He's really good at that, honestly. Uh, like, will that not be too much of a bother? 
Mm, well, it's his job, so no. Like, don't you have, like, any birds here that sends mail? I could, like, f- send a message to Penny and get her to do it. Oh. Again, Penny meeting my mom. she's good at finding oh. people. <laughs> well, as long as she's nice to my mom. I, I don't see why she wouldn't be. I mean... And yeah, then looks at Mira. Yeah, isn't trying to date Delmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. I just shrug like I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Penny for your thoughts. Uh, so, if that's okay with everyone, Delmas will leave the room. You can all start. Uh, you, Integrity, can lead Winsler and uh, Mira, who I think have also taken intro alchemy classes. I think I'm taking it this semester, so yes. Okay, cool. So this will be fresh in your mind at the very least. Uh, Winsler, actually, I don't think ever took any alchemy. He's just all in on zoology. I tried. Um, I tried having a study session with Arior that one time. It didn't work out. <laughs> Different dialects of dwarf. Of yes. dwarf. Sorry. Uh, mm. Dwarf. Uh, integrity. You can lead. You, integrity and Mira. You can kind of like take and like start following the listing ingredients and procedures that Delna seems to have scribed out. And Winsler, you can follow in their footsteps. Meanwhile, Serenapth, you can peruse this grimoire. Peruse. So Ooh. what this will be folks, is I would like you, Winsler Wallaby, you, Integrity Idleberry, and you, Mira Marchand, to make what we haven't used in a very long time, but what is called an alchemy check, which is, please roll a d20, add your intelligence, and in the event that you've taken one or more uh, alchemy classes, add your proficiency to it. So it's just the same as an arcana check for me. Perfect. Well, if I'm taking all... Alchemy 2, then uh, I assume I got Alchemy 1. Yes. Uh, 6 plus 3, which is a 9. Oh, God. Uh, I got 19. Cool. 15 Winslet. plus 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. <laughs> Wait, what did you wow. say it was like if we got... If you've taken um, an alchemy class or otherwise have proficiency in alchemy, um, then add your proficiency bonus to it. And integrity, you've taken an alchemy class, so add your proficiency okay. bonus as well. So then that would be 15 plus 4 plus 3, 22. Cool. Right? We're totally yep. pulling our weight here. Definitely. I mean, your two checks combined is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. And then Serenapth, could you make an arcana check for me? Or yes. a medicine check? Or... Yeah, I think those two would cover Surviving. it. Whichever one of whichever one of those is better for you, roll that, okay? Arcana. Okay, cool. I don't know shit about healing nothing. Uh, well, who among us does? <laughs> oh, sh- I'm doing really good today, guys. Fuck yeah. I'm that glad a, some of us are. <laughs> that is a 16 plus a 5, so 21. Nice. Holy shit. Okay. I love so, this dice. Uh, let's start then with Saren up you, what you found. Uh, the others uh, run around the room fetching miscellaneous alchemy equipment uh, per the list that Delnus has written uh, and uh, can do so reasonably well. Uh, integrity, at the very least, you can correct your friends when they are making mistakes, but we'll get to the actual minutia of that in a moment. Serenepth Cinderman. You have at your fingertips the 2002 DVD menu uh, index of all the information on dead people you could ever want. Oh, fuck yeah. You begin perusing through the sections, skipping over that necromantic hallucinogens section and onto the nifty spells and such. Uh, It seems that this book in general focuses on astral projection uh, largely, and those seem to be areas that Delnus has looked through Uh, especially thoroughly. Uh, There's also things about the joining of souls together, uh, like binding them in life and in death. Uh, There's communing with ghosts on your own physical plane of existence. Similar, you might recall, to what the investigators did when Underbrow, Headmaster Underbrow, was murdered, Serenep, Um, (laughs) which seems to be... (laughs) <laughs> to um, get him to give us detention one last time. Yes, to get yeah. detention. Yeah. He fucking died. Uh, to ask to ask about Nesca, which he fucking said nothing about, presumably, and to give you detention. Um, <laughs> that's in there. There's also many interesting things about resurrections and revivals that you can pick through. Did you have any specific question for me that you wanted answered? Let's say you can get one about 
the actual work at hand, looking through Delness's work and everything, because you rolled 21, that's pretty high. Uh, so mm-hmm. you can have one question about the work Delness was doing, about like the actual stuff and concentrating and like an aspect of that if you want information. And you can ask me a question about reviving people. Okay. okay. Um, with the stuff that Delness is working on currently with mm-hmm. the powder and such and like the astral projection mm-hmm. discussion, um, I guess... Like, would I be able to see what she's, what she already, like, mm, is this, is yes. this me no, working it, off what she's already has, or is it me building more onto it's what she either, already has? Yeah, it can, it's kind of both. Like, you skim over the few notes that she does have and uh, look mm-hmm. through some of the less uh, poked through. There's a very clear way to see in this crystal ball. It's like a almost highlighted area where people have already looked through those pages of the stored mm-hmm. sections of the grimoire. So looking through the sections that she hasn't looked through already, which I think would be the most like that makes the most sense to me at least and, mm-hmm. and correct me if that's not something Sarah Neptune would want to be doing um, 100% she would okay. be doing that turning yeah. over stones that were un- oh, previously unturned right because um, I trust that Delness has already been doing proper research absolutely with what she has already looked at um you read a fun passage in one of these about uh there's like a little header in a breakout box that says on on the subject of casting high order magic Ooh. It okay. is reads that while using concentrated hallucinogenic necromancy compounds allows users to cast these spells in place of other more expensive ingredients. While reading it, Sarah, enough that you hear that really, really pompous voice in your head, uh, <laughs> almost playing for you. The, the hallucinogenic compounds can replace uh, otherwise expensive compounds used in necromantic spells. Uh, this does not replace one's need for the ability and aptitude of casting high order magics, the magics that will wear one out and potentially end the lives of those not ready to cast such high order magic and spells in a single day or month. The authors of this grimoire firmly would recommend seeking out high magic orders with altruistic spirits or, alternatively, on the hush and hush, finding which covens to cast the spell for you. On the latter, we firmly do recommend keeping an eye on witch covens, as they are like to harvest organs and other viscera from you and your friends while you are in an astral-projected form. Barring this, and given that if you have the capacity to cast this magic yourself, we do recommend having a friend or loved one watch over your unconscious frame while you project yourself into ghost ghastly realms, so as not to succumb to the vices of nature while you are unfit to deal with them. Okay, so... Um, what I'm taking from this is Mm -hmm. while, okay, so like. What you can take from this, I'll tell you out of here what this kind of (laughs) is. Because I'm trying to like write down the notes for it, but it's a lot. Astral projection is a ninth level spell. None of you at the moment have the ability to cast that. The book recommends seeking out a magic order where you might find a mage capable of casting such a spell or a circle of wizards that could combine their powers to cast it. Similar to how a witch coven might. The book cautions against seeking out witch covens because they are dangerous and might uh, steal <laughs> things from you, including no your kidding. organs. We've uh, yes. literally so done that multiple times have... and it's never come back to bite us once. So yes. Yeah, so yeah. it leaves us extremely vulnerable if yes. we try it ourselves. Yes. And it's important to have People a watching trusted you. individual yeah. in case someone tries to come and steal our organs. <laughs> yes. It's a. It seems that okay. the, the the the. I think it's enough intuiting. You can read a couple of different passages, and you I think can glean someone who wrote this book might have astral projected once and had a terrible time and might have lost an organ or two. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, my kidney. This, the, the whole, yeah. like, I, yeah, the whole stereotype of, like, you wake up, like, in an ice bath. It, yes. With, like, <laughs> a uh, scar on your side heavens. from, like, in, like from, like, the surgery or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Christ. Okay. All right. Okay, that makes sense. And then as far as reviving magic, did you have a pressing question that you wanted information on? I think the most pressing thing when it comes to specifically us doing this with artists mm-hmm. is his soul is currently bound to an inanimate object. Mm -hmm. So the main question would be, because there's a Mm -hmm. whole thing about homunculi, like creating a being, uh, would there be, and there was like the whole thing about like joining souls, like tethering them. Joining souls in life and death. Yes. Would there be a system in place of like, 
with that transferring magic, changing it so that it's more you're taking the soul mm. from one inanimate thing and, and putting, putting it, it into, into another something body. else. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a section all about that, Saren. Uh, there's a section that reads, the header of which reads, Ghosts to Ghouls, How to Transmit the Undead into the Living Dead. I'm imagining like and really it, like dick cracked like lightning and like yes dead into dead dead into (laughs) living dead uh dead into dead but can move yes there seems to be a whole section of this book dedicated to talking about how to take a ghoul or a a ghost of some sort or a banshee of course uh and taking that and turning it into and and transmitting their soul in pushing it into the corpse or assembled flesh of some being. And in the event that that vessel already had a soul, it would kind of like do a little switcheroo and make a ghost out of whatever soul was already in there. And in the event that there was no soul, it just goes in and has a likely, uh, uh, it has a lower possibility of success in the event that there was no soul, Serenath. Does that make sense? Okay. Either you can swap the uh, uh, incorporeal soul into a dead body and it might work, or you could put it into a living body and it most assuredly would work, but push the other person's soul out. So we just need somebody who's like just disposable mm. enough that we can put them Bailey. in a rock instead. <laughs> I was yeah. about okay, to say, but then oh, Artis is in Bailey's body and we have to see that face every day. Yeah, no, but then we have fair. okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Then me, there's the polymorph out. potion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. If we find someone who is the exact same height as Artis. <laughs> And we don't like them a lot. We can push it. So that means that aren't there artists six and Merendine both and like so, six foot four? Uh, oh Merendine's bigger than six foot four. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. So like, okay, okay, here's my hypothetical. And mind you, we do not have all of the steps in this. Mm-hmm. If we do a the switch, basically, Ooh. that means we're putting a soul into the pebble itself. It won't become a big thing. It'll be in the pebble, like dormant or whatever. And so basically, we just have to find someone who either has passed but still has their soul in their body or mm-hmm. find someone who might be dangerous as they currently are. And then and doing this them. would like fix it. Winsler. And then true polymorph. Winsler. To- what if we use loud? You know, we have Pebble Artists. Here's Loud, a very dangerous <laughs> creature. We do the swap while Loud's distracted, of course, right? The swap. So then we put Artist's soul in Loud's body, and Loud's soul is in the Pebble where they can do no harm. And, and then, then we use polymorph, the polymorph Loud portion. into Artist. It does, yeah, it did sound like Loud had like basically left their plane to sort of chase after Ferdinand. So, I mean... It's not a bad idea. It's risky. The main, the main thing is getting loud down long enough mm-hmm. to cast the spell. Yes. And mm-hmm. I think doing research into if there are any possible backfires of any kind mm-hmm. would also protect us from a lot of heartbreak later on in time. <laughs> I don't know. I sort of feel a little... uh what's the word for it apprehensive to make loud angrier than he already but that's was. the thing loud like, can be angry but he'll be stuck in a pebble with, with no way to what's he show that anger it? but are we ever strong enough to keep him in cap and or them like in inca- incapacitated long enough to be able to do this throw a rock deep into the ocean <laughs> i have another idea i have another idea i have another idea <laughs> okay <laughs> We, the boat lady, who's currently turned to wood, stuck, mm-hmm. frozen the in woman. the loft mm-hmm. of elders mm-hmm. because she broke the rule and injured somebody while in the loft. And now, for all we know at the moment, mind you, she's frozen mm-hmm. and that body is available. The soul should still be in the body, but... Wouldn't that just be it, putting artists from one frozen inanimate object into another frozen inanimate yeah, object? Yeah, except one of but them like, is not if mobile. We, but hear me out, because... Okay, so because Isithil um, themselves uh-huh. had done it, maybe if we explain the situation because we did try to help the last time we were there, um, maybe um, they would be willing to, once we switch artists yeah. out yeah. with the... The Ivory, Ivory Mask Woman? Woman. Ivory Mask Woman, thank you. Then maybe Isithil will release the 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 that the might be something form? to ask before doing it though not after a yeah. hundred percent yes or else we just go from artist but stuck in a pebble idea. to mm-hmm. artist stuck in a wood we could also pay what someone who I... wants to be a rock <laughs> integrity who would want what to would be they do a with the money though? if they're a rock 
That's true. Sorry, I was just putting out ideas there. <laughs> I imagine a I just imagine someone who has become a pebble and like their one wish, even if they cannot feel it, is to have it to, is for someone to make it rain it's on gone. their pebble form. And that's like their dying wish. Jealous returns with a couple of things. Uh, she'll she's kind of like putting around while you're all having this discussion. And she, <laughs> when it. when you get to this part where integrity just says, what if we paid someone that wants to be a pebble and we just switch with them? She'll say, um, I know that it might not work, but I do have experience making like flesh golems. So we what could, is a like... flesh golem? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked, Mira. You take dead pieces, of, like pieces of dead people who are uh-huh. dead, uh, yeah. who have willingly given themselves up to be used in arcane research and kind of using uh, necromantic energies and liquids and juices, salves, stitches, general knowledge of surgery and that kind of thing. You can put mm-hmm. them back together. Uh, and then normally you would put an arcane core of some sort into them and give them life, an artificial kind of life. But I'm pretty sure a soul could work. So c- could you stitch together a body to look like artists, kind of, oh. and then put artists' Well, we have the true that? polymorph for the end of that anyway. That's true. But so the, I guess so as long as there like, was that a was... bag of meat that kind of looked like artists, right? Or that was or the like same was height, the same at least. size. Yeah. What if I... we put artist's soul and swapped it with a cow? That's... What? But like Winsler, a cow is a lot bigger than a person. Hmm. We could just do like a person-sized animal, I guess. But I'm but just based on ease of access dog. on campus. What is... Like, mm-hmm. how hard is it to make a flesh golem? Like, does it take oh. a lot of time? Is it, like, really expensive? Like, does it take mm-hmm. a lot of people? Uh, in my golemnology class, over the course of, like, the semester, we made, like, eight or ten flesh golems. Holy shit. So okay. So they're pretty easy to make as long as you have access to it. And th- judging by Indumati giving me, like, this crystal grimoire, I'm certain that I could talk her into giving me some pieces of a person. Well, especially if we said it was for artists now that we're allowed to say that. Yeah, I'm sure that that would make her more likely to help out a bit at least, right? Like if it was to do good, right? It's not us making a thing. It's not like I'm asking, hey, Inzmani, give me pieces of dead people to like make, I don't know, some undead monster to terrorize campus or something like that. Or... Yeah, there was one of those in the book that time, and that was not good news. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We could go with that if you want. Uh, and then I, I don't think anything bad should happen to his soul if it fails. It just stay I, in the pebble? Yeah, I assume it'll just, like, make all the meat go bad. And then we Ew. could just, and then if so, if it doesn't work, we still have the option of switching him with, like, Loud or someone else. Mm-hmm. I, I suppose just the, the I guess, according to this at least, the uh, success rate definitely drops if there's not already, if it's not already a body that has a soul or at least i guess in this case maybe has a place for the soul it the success rate drops how much um fair enough you consult the book it seems to go from about a 90 percent chance to about a 45 percent chance Ooh, that's uh, half it's, mm-hmm. it's yeah that's quite a drop it drops to 45 so basically it's a coin flip yeah uh, well, we can make two bodies Delmas says, drinking like a cup of tea. Yeah, that's I a mean, good point. The forty-five percent drop in chance doesn't seem to be too bad, especially if you say that there aren't really any big consequences to, to my knowledge. If it fails, I am not like an Suppose expert so. in this. I do yeah. want to be. We super could ask clear. around about that. Yeah, about I, consequences. You could like meet fails. with Indamati and explain to her the circumstances. Like instead of going through me, I'm sure she'd be able to hear you out. I can, can find you out where her over right now. Rogue spirit right rogue. now, probably not. Uh. No. She's been shut up in her house for like a little bunch. I can tell you how to like what to say to get to her house uh, and like send a letter in advance if you want. I think a letter might work very well. Mm-hmm. Okay, to just a lot of mail, a lot of mail first. getting sent. Um, okay, if it well, uh, cool. So that's that, and I guess we can get on making potions or not yeah. potions. Concentrated Concentrate. dust. Yeah. Concentrated snake dust. Just don't inhale it. And she smiles like a fucking dork at everyone. <laughs> um, It seems I've done my research. Is there anything else I can do to help right now? Integrity. Tell me 
as because this conversation was happening while the three of you were kind of like going about the business of getting the concentrate right re- concentrate ready to go yes. integrity tell me what that looks like and ben and sarah okay. i guess winsler and mira sorry uh feel free to add in details willy-nilly to okay. what does it look like what does the concentration process look like please okay so be um, imaginative I, so there are <laughs> multiple flasks on the table i of would course. imagine um mm-hmm. There are no, are there any masks that we can use? Because I know that this is like a... Mm. What do the like masks look like? Mira, what do the masks look like? Plague doctor masks. They are a bunch of plague doctor masks, yes. Ooh. Cool. Everyone in this scene is wearing plague doctor masks. Fuck <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad they have one in small. Hell yeah. It has like extra, like a, like an extra cinch down belt for yours, Winsler, just so it has a tight seal around your head because your head's so tiny. <laughs> Perfect. And it's also super important to be wearing um, tight gloves for mm-hmm. this, um, as I have learned in my alchemy class. Um, of course. I would like a, a bunch of uh on on there's a there's a fire going on of course something getting warm because i know that it is easier to mix uh things together when Mm -hmm. um when some fluids are warmer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i think i will just be asking winsler or mira to pass me certain things perfect um i'll be like okay do not breathe while i'm doing this just because there's a bunch of fumes that happen winsler what additives are added to this in order to, for it to actually get become concentrated. It's not just the singular dust of orchids. There is an mm. additive component to We're this. We're increasing the potency, right? Correct. Mm. I would say we definitely add some like salt to it. Ooh. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> like a nice tomato soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you add some you add some like good salt, like that good rock salt. Of course, of course. Oh, okay. Um so Winsler's just... sitting there with a chisel just breaking off chunks of a, like a rock of salt, like just a big crystal. Um like one of those salt lamps. Um which just looks delicious. Uh and, and slowly helping. And then so Integrity Serenup finally offers support after having concluded research. What instruction, what task do you leave to Serenup? To fulfill integrity. Um, Serenip, uh So right now, what I am doing is extracting uh, the the essence essence of this of this powder. So what I need you to do is walk up to that machine over there <laughs> and um, put this tiny flask in it, and then you are going to press um, the button. Um, <laughs> on the floor and it's going to go around very very fast make sure that you keep it balanced <laughs> here's no, actually another this f- one's this one's kind of like an old school one so there's just a crank that you have to really okay. give it on actually sure. oh i'm sorry um yeah i i was imagining that uh in the future uh i could make it like that because i'm sure mm-hmm. that that will make things easier for oh, people who like do alchemy really nice. yeah yeah so the, like, um hand here's- crank thing my arms are not that strong. Like it really, like twenty seconds and it kills me, and I just start slowing down. But like, yeah, Sarah, Dennis, you should probably, you should probably do good at this, right? Sounds yeah, to me like you need to start working out with me. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been lifting Virgil quite a bit to kind of <laughs> get him. her body strength. So, uh, so there's a gym Sarah in the now. chapel, you know, the old one. You can go. Mm. So here's a balancing flask, and just make sure that you keep it on the other side of where you're putting it. Oh my god! um, Before you um, before you start rolling (laughs) things around, because you don't want anything to fly around. Because so that's just how things are. In that case, Sarah, up make a strength athletics check for me, please. Uh oh! Literally, all I literally all I'm imagining is my mom's lab yep. at work. because like, I, I can just see it in my head now. I, and now I, I don't take your kid to work day all over. I don't know if any of you have ever seen a real life crank centrifuge before. They are fucking funny though. <laughs> nah, mom had the automatic one, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. Right. Put the lid on it, and it just fucking holy makes a noise. shit! That's a nineteen. Oh, oh my hell god! Yes. All right. I got. Sarah up's yoked. Fucking <laughs> buff. Damn. This team is really shockingly buff. Um, Winsler and Del out here, the fucking nerds, though. Yeah. Um, so, Sarah Neff, you proceed with the uh, centrifuging of, is that a proper conjugation? Who knows? Uh, I think of, she takes off like her, her, her like her giant scarf yeah. thing because and she doesn't want to get like a cool gross. fucking tank top. <laughs> Imagine like a, like, a, like, like a tank top and like 
a long white skirt, but like they look like if you look at it together, it looks like a dress. Fuck but yeah. it's actually just two separate things. Cool. Uh, so Saranoff is cranking this thing in the corner as you continue the distillation. Uh, how many of these do you make? Like little concentrated vials of them to put in like the incubator. In, uh, Delness seems to be preparing like a like insulated steel container to like keep them in and keep them warm uh, for mm-hmm. the duration of its like incubation period. How many little vials are you making though? We probably just need five, right? If we're all gonna use one? A dozen. <laughs> Uh, I have heard in my class that 10 is a lucky number. Um, so typically when people make uh, alchemy concentrates, they make uh, 10 because 10 is Ben. 10 is Ben. <laughs> Who's Ben? What? I people think in the discussion that. of how many to make, uh, Sarah mm-hmm. will also bring up what else she read in the book about the astral projection stuff. Yeah. Like, about like, someone staying, like yeah, being someone in somewhere to, safe, like, someone watching over everyone. Yeah, just because like how dangerous it could be for the people who are going to the astral projection, especially if we're doing it sort of kind of separate from everything else. Like, mm-hmm. so someone it's should a good look idea at our to bodies. definitely have someone. That makes sense. Well, why don't mm-hmm. we make ten? But we'll probably only need to use four then. Yeah. But then that way, if one of them gets damaged or something like that, or if we need to go back for some reason, mm-hmm. though, I, I can't imagine why we should. We have it just mm-hmm. in case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You okay. can never go yeah, wrong with having idea. more. Emergency reserve. Yeah. So way, we'll probably have to keep them under lock and key. You, at, you guys started this around one in the afternoon. Uh, or you got to Delnus's estate, the Erythrin estate, at about one in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. You had that conversation for about 30, 45 minutes uh, and then got started working. The procedure, or, or everything in total, took about 16 hours. Holy uh, shit. And you could take breaks and eat food during that if you wanted to sleep. It wouldn't have been for a full eight, but let me know if you did sleep, in fact. We do um, have the duel in the morning. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's I what I'm getting no one, to. I think once no one needed my raw strength anymore <laughs> for for the for the big chores, um, yeah. I probably, like, set myself up and like mm-hmm. on like one of the benches or something and mm-hmm. just like holding took a- uh, holding that crystal ball oh, and nice looking net. through a couple more things and drifting to sleep yeah she's like hugging it to her chest because it's because she just sleeps and thinks yeah. it's virgil it's so she's huge. like falls asleep with i want to be clear about the size of this thing it's like massive two, two foot diameter kind of like huge crystal ball it weighs only like 12 grams and it's very cool uh you assume it to be hollow of some sort um mm. anyways You all work through the night and into the early morning and can take very quick uh, naps. Delnus will provide you with places that you can sleep or Serenep just rolls up on one of the benches. Uh, (laughs) You can all... Where do all of you sleep very quickly? Because that's fun flavor. Near the stairs. Okay. By the the weird gross animal cupboards. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. And integrity, Idleberry. Considering how crowded we are in here, um, I am probably going to sleep upstairs in the living room if I'm permitted with my Del- yeah. siblings. Uh, okay, you can absolutely. Delnus also walks, like, opens the hatch for you, and you can like get out. And she'll say, "Just be really quiet. My dad should probably be asleep already. Your siblings are asleep in in the library, though. They're, the couches in there are really comfortable. I'm sure you'll get uh, uh, some good sleep." Um, Felice watched them all night, and they they should be fine though. Uh, and Delnus will kind of look at you, Mira, like getting ready to go to sleep by like this, this, like by that area. And she'll say, do you want to, there's like a foot bed thing in my room if you oh. want to like sleep there. Yeah, that actually didn't occur to me. Yeah, sure. That's fine. This was just the best place I could find where like the, the ground wasn't cluttered, mm. but it's over top of some like dead bird things. So that might mm-hmm. be great, actually. Thank you. Yeah. And... You, she will like awkwardly fidget with her hands and you guys can all scoot <laughs> and go to sleep in some manner or way. In the morning, you can Dual wake time. up. You can all wake up not well rested whatsoever. 
cool. uh, kind of cramped from sleeping on wood or stools. Mira, do you sleep on the stool or do you just want to sleep in Delna's bed with her? I will sleep in her bed with her because we're we're past the point of Mira oh, having yes. to sleep on the floor. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it was just kind of like an awkward kind of like, hey, do you want to sleep in my bed in front of all your friends? Uh, proposition. And then yeah. when you get there, she's like, I didn't actually mean that. That was just like, I, I, did, I just said it. Um, oh, no, I mean, it's, it's fine. If it's fine mm-hmm. with you, it's fine with me. Um, if yeah. that's cool. Okay. I mean, cool. I actually wanted to ask you, like, I ini- initially asked you because I was like, oh, it could be kind of romantic if we did this just uh-huh. together. But then everyone else showing up, it made it yeah. super, uh, incredibly not, and the atmosphere no. changed wildly. Yeah. I'm glad they were here because I'm not very good at alchemy, so I'm really glad Integrity was doing her stuff. Yeah, but, but it I is nice am kind of good at alchemy, time. so I could have yeah. been like, a, oh, look, yeah. I'm teaching my girlfriend how to yeah. do this. And well, it's... now it's just us, so now it can be romantic <laughs> again. <laughs> Shut and up, then you guys, I'm better at alchemy than you. Integrity stealing Delmas' thunder. <laughs> and then you guys go in. <laughs> to Delance's room uh, and in the morning you can all awake and quiet like mice make stealth checks to make it out the front door and back to Fuck. campus Fuck. hell yeah is Raythrin gonna stop us and start telling regaling us with tales of something weird we don't want to know about <laughs> I forgot I'm pretty good at stealth as Mira that's a 16 plus 5 that's a 21 stealth. 25 is, why does this always happen to me yeah. on checks oh, no. I don't care about I got a nat 20. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. perfect. <laughs> Chill. Uh, this is uh, 16. Should I make rolls for my siblings? <laughs> uh, I can make rolls for your siblings, oh of God. course. Can I make a, a roll for one of them? Sure. Oh, uh, which boy. one do you want, Anora or Ernest? Um, I want to do Ernest. Okay, I got Anora oh. then. <laughs> oh, no. Ernest we're, we're, got a four. Okay. I don't know what you Bitch. need to add to that. <laughs> Ernest has a plus zero to stealth. Uh, Anora okay. also has a plus zero to stealth. She got a two. Um, <laughs> so Great. From the library, you, you know hear. the rules of sneaking. As you all are walking out in the morning, kind of like disheveled, drool, back cramp, you know, that kind of thing. Just like the, like the aching of doing work all night. You hear two kids crying. Not crying like, Wah, but like Aww. Ernest going like, Oh, my stomach. And Anora oh, goes, oh, they I ate so much. There was oh, no. too many things. Integrity, my stomach. Ernest says, integrity, integrity, integrity. And then you hear a creaking coming from upstairs. And you hear or Elric say, like, is someone there? I keep hearing voices, and I'm like, this is not my daughter's friends. And he, like, walks to the banister as you all are, like, at the actual door to exit. And, like, your two siblings, one on either, like, holding either hand, go, like, uh, clutching at their stomachs, like, doubled Hush. over almost. Hush. So they're, they're like, over... Elric is standing at the top of the stairs looking at all of you in his foyer. <laughs> yes, as you're like and s- like at the, the two door. two siblings are with us, right? Yeah, you're like at the door. I'm going to do something. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't kill um, my siblings, please. <laughs> no, well, why that's is not that what I'm going to do. Thought? I'm going to I'm going to like look over there. Oh, this <laughs> shit. What <laughs> and what do you do? That's it? You don't do any magic to follow that up? You just play it? I, I do. I do follow it up. So first I'm going to cast Mage Hand. Ooh. Knock okay. over the jar that I broke initially. Oh my god. Okay. And then and then I'm going to cast Fog Cloud. <gasps> okay. You okay? You all see like Anora and Ernest are like, Wah. and like that's especially Anora. She's wicked loud right now, just like. <laughs> I had so much, right? Like she's like dying out here. Uh, and then Elric says, "What? Uh, why are all of you in my house? What are you all?" And then Winsor goes, "Look over there." Uh, and then you you see a little mage hand go whap and smack <laughs> over like as if it's a little cat paw knocking something off the shelf, uh, oh a, a piece of repaired pottery. It smashes to the ground and like his face drops and goes, "That was one of my most valuable pots." And then a <laughs> and then a cloud of fog as he like like walks down the <laughs> stairs solemnly like Aww. shaking his head uh, and you all rush through the doors <laughs> back I call it, to I'm campus. so sorry that I also rush out. <laughs> it is what it is uh, and you all rush <laughs> oh, no, out. Dude. Uh, and that's where we'll end this. Or that's no, the no, first no, no, time I've no, no, ever God. used Fog you, Cloud. You rush to meet it, make it to at this hour of the day to the evocation department for your duel which starts in checking the watches 
about 10 minutes. Oh my God. Oh, fuck. Oh and that's where we'll end this episode. <laughs> ben, could you give us an outro? Sure, I suppose, as I reappear from the cloud of smoke. Thank you all for listening to this episode of Trials and Trebuchets. If you enjoyed, uh, please leave a review. We read all of them. We love to hear from you. It's so nice. We read all of them. It's great. Yes. Uh, if you want to check out some more uh, Trials and Trebuchets content, <laughs> Uh, such content. as, you know, upcoming teasers for episodes, fan art, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You can check out our social media pages on Instagram and Twitter at Trials and Trebs. We also have a Discord link in the uh, description of this episode that you can click on and join our Discord and talk mm-hmm. to lots of cool people and maybe us when we're there. <laughs> it's really fun and I like it. It's chill. Mm-hmm. Um, and for those who are feeling a little extra generous, we also have a Patreon page. There you can uh, access our multitude of tiers, which give you access to maps, notes, a lot of mm-hmm. like inside goodies, like bloopers, lots of fun Blue. stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, it basically just helps us out by, you know, keeping track of our of our hosting costs, mm-hmm. uh, equipment and such. And it also just helps us, you know, pay the bills when we, yes. when we need to. So to keep the lights on. Keep the lights on, eh? Uh, that's it, eh? Uh, yeah. Thanks everyone for listening <laughs> hey. this week. Uh, it's a bit of a long one, but I hope you had fun. I had some fun playing characters, telling people what's in a book. Uh, tune in next <laughs> week in for book? the thrilling duels. Uh, until then, oh. bye. 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 bye.